So today I thought that I would show you how I work the invisible decrease and the invisible increase. So this is a very easy increase or decreasing method that you can work with any stitch. Today I'm choosing to show you working extended single crochet stitches and I've worked these in the round but like I said you can work this increase or decrease method with any stitch. So I'm just going to do a couple more stitches in extended single crochet and then let's say we wanted to do a decrease so what we would do is that we would pick up the front loop of the next stitch and after we pick up this front loop here then we're going to pick the back loop of the following stitch okay so you can see now i'm just going to show you again so that we can have a very clear picture of the loops that I'm referring to. So this is the front loop of the next stitch and then the back loop of the following stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop and then we just complete our stitches. So I'm going to do uh, another just extended single crochet decrease with you guys. So pick up the front loop of the next stitch and then the back loop of the following stitch. Yarn over, pull through those two loops and then you are going to complete your stitch. So you only complete your stitch after you've pulled the yarn through those two loops. And here you can see that the stitches lay pretty invisibly, like if you look very closely you can still spot where you made the decrease, but overall it's pretty invisible. So again, I'm going to pick up the front loop of the next stitch, right? This is the front loop of the next stitch and then the back loop of the following stitch. And if you want to make sure that you're not working into any of the loops you've decreased, you can always kind of like stretch your work a little bit and you can see that these two are the unlooped, unworked stitches. Okay, so this is the back loop here. Again, I'm going to pull up the front loop of the next stitch and then the back loop of the following stitch. I'm going to yarn over, pull through those two loops and only after I've pulled through those two loops am I completing my extended single crochet stitches. Okay, so there are three stitches that we have decreased there. And as I had mentioned, this decrease method works with any stitch. Let's say that I want to do a double crochet decrease. Well, I would yarn over like if I was doing a double crochet and then I would insert my hook in the front loop and then the back loop as I've done. Pull up that loop, three loops on the hook. Now I'm going to yarn over, pull through those first two and then the last two for a double crochet. And we've just done an invisible double crochet decrease. Well, let's say you wanted to do an invisible half double crochet decrease. Well, you would yarn over as per usual and then you would insert your hook in the front loop of the next stitch and the back loop of the following stitch. Yarn over, pull your hook through and you have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through those three loops on the hook and you've just done your half double crochet decrease. So again, this decrease method works with any stitch and it has less bulk and as the name suggests, it is a little bit more invisible than just doing the normal decrease. So let's say we wanted to do the opposite and work an invisible increase. So an invisible increase means that instead of working two stitches like this, you know, going under both loops and you can quite visibly see that you've done two stitches in one stitch. Instead of doing that, what we're going to do is work one stitch in the front loop. And work the other stitch in the back loop. By working one stitch per loop, we make this increase a little more invisible because if we kind of lay it flat, it's not as noticeable as the V that you get when you work the two stitches under both loops. 
So the invisible increase method also works with any stitch as well. You would just work, as I said, one stitch in the front loop and then the other stitch in the back loop. And as easy as that, we've done an invisible crochet increase. So let's say we wanted to do a double crochet increase, invisibly that is. Well, I'm just doing a couple of double crochet stitches to get some height. And we're just, for the invisible increase, we're just going to yarn over, go through the front loop of the next stitch, and work a double crochet stitch. And then go through the back loop of that same stitch and work a double crochet. So we're still working two stitches in one stitch. It's just that instead of going through the whole both loops, we are dividing one stitch per loop. And that reduces the bulk. And also it just makes it very easy to remember how to decrease with any increase, sorry, with any stitch. So these are my preferred increases and decrease methods. I use these, for example, in the Las Nubes crochet top, which I will link for you in the description box. But yeah, um, I hope you find this tutorial useful. And if you are interested in any more tutorials, then please check out the Crochet Cakes main YouTube channel or you could check out my website to find out what other patterns use this type of increase slash decrease method. I should also point out that this um, increase slash decrease method, you can substitute it for the traditional increase or decrease method. Just make sure that um, there is not a purpose to the traditional decrease method. So for example, if you do a treble decrease after doing a granny stitch that creates a bit of a robin's egg stitch so there you would want to do your traditional decrease method but other than that feel free to substitute the invisible increase or the invisible decrease thank you so much for watching this tutorial and i hope to see you in the next crochet cakes video bye for now and happy crafting